just vote from me. And those kingdoms fell. I mean, you can go back and look in history, and nobody's kingdom stood. And yet men continued to look for that great hero that was in his own image, looking for him so hard that when he finally came, they didn't even recognize him. Oh, bless the Lord. They were looking for a great warrior. And somebody came in swaddling clothes. <laughs> wasn't even recognized uh, born up in the hill country of Judea nobody knew about it but a handful of shepherds and they were told to spread the word around I don't know how far it got but they didn't recognize that king even though he had been prophesied from, from, from the very first prophecy about the seed of the woman bruising the serpent's head, they were looking for this great warrior, a warrior king. And when he came in that stage, <laughs> little baby, helpless, breastfed, oh, bless the Lord, nobody recognized him. And, and I just want to read something about a couple of scriptures. I'm not going to be long. See, Isaiah, as the Spirit gave him vision, begin to write, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Uh, but sometimes we miss the punctuation there. There's a full code. That means the explanation of his entire earthly life is coming up. And say, so, and, 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 and if unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. That's a conjunction full of wonder. Lord, how'd I get over? I was a wretch undone. And somewhere I'm, I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're praying for me. <laughs> and, and upon his shoulders, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So, so we know of a fact that none of these great kingdoms that came before him was that one. So there had to be another. Oh, bless the Lord. So they kept on trudging. He walked the earth 33 years. But those last three years, he began to preach. And he began to say, I'm the one that was prophesying. I'm the one that came to set you free. I'm the one that can bring peace. I was at home yesterday, minding my own business. And a friend of mine come by. He just needs to get saved. Amen, and, 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 and he began to talk to me. And, 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 and so, you know, it's holiday time, and his wife is going out with friends and relatives shopping, and she's not coming back till late. And he's saying, I can't sleep when she ain't in the house. And I begin to tell him, but I know somebody who can give you peace. Well, bless the Lord. He say, I don't feel safe when she ain't in here. I say, I got somebody that will walk with you. <laughs> They'll be with you through thick and thin. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Yeah, yeah, I'm losing my voice. He, I, hey, thanks. <laughs> so, so, so he, he began to preach this word. And he was traveling around. No, I won't. And, and, and here, let's see what this says. And, 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 and he's traveling around and, 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 and he's preaching and he began to gather unto himself men. And he began to tell them about this kingdom that's to come. Uh -huh. And they wanted to know, well, well, what is this thing going to be? And, 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 and one of the writers picked it up again, going to Isaiah. And, 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 and 
Pharisee, where was that? 53 and 5. And, and, and I said he was wounded for my transgression. I ain't talking about you now. Yeah, I, I made my own mistakes. <laughs> he was wounded for my transgressions. I offended a lot of people. Some nights I had to run. <laughs> well, bless, and, and, and his keeping power. When I didn't know how to keep myself, he kept me. When, when I didn't know how to defend myself, he defended me. I should have been dead by now. But by the grace of God and the coming of this kingdom, I'm looking to stand today. But it say he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes I'm healed. Oh, bless the Lord. By his stripes, I can say no now. Hey, I've been there where I couldn't say no. I, I know what it is to be all bound up. Hey, I had to do this, and I had to do that. But one day, I found a man, the king and the warrior that I was looking for. And he wasn't setting up his kingdom right then. But he said, I want you. And his name wasn't Uncle Sam. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. He said, come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? I said, go where, Lord? He said, wherever I send you. Oh, bless the Lord. Hey, that, you know, I appreciate peacemakers. Hey, it, it, Paul said, for, for the gospel's sake. He said, I became a Roman. Hey, and I look at this organization, and I see that for the gospel's sake, they came south of eight miles and became Detroiters. Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> see, you got to do some things you don't want to do sometimes. Oh, bless the Lord. You got to go somewhere you don't want to go sometimes. Oh, bless the Lord. Why? Because he said, I will never leave you, and I won't forsake you. I'll give you peace that pass understanding. Well, but see, my, my hope was all caught up one day in money. My hope was all caught up one day in drugs. My hope was all caught up one day in drink and carousing. Staying up three and four days at a time, killing myself. But one day, <laughs> one day, I met a man. He said, I can give you hope where there was no hope. <laughs> so I can give you peace. And you didn't have peace. So I can set you free. Hey, y'all, don't look at me like that. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But I know what it's like to be free. Hey, I was captured. I want to give you another example. Samson went into the city of Gaza. And the enemy locked it up. He said, we got him now. He's been killing us for a long time. He said, but we locked him up in our stronghold. And the book say at midnight. Samson got up, and he took the door and the gate and the key and took it up on a hill and laid it down, and he didn't tell anybody that they were free. But way down the line, 30, I believe, was it, 36 generations from Adam, another Samson, another judge, went up on a hill, hung on a cross, bled and died. <laughs> Went down in the prison and told them, you're free. Come on out of here. And the scriptures say the people in Jerusalem saw him walking on the street. Unbound, unfettered, set free. Oh, bless the Lord. See, I'm free tonight. I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't fearing nothing. I got a king. He's coming one day. 
He's coming to set up his kingdom. And that kingdom won't fall. Rome fell. Greeks fell. Babylon fell. I got news for you. This place going to fall. But he's bringing a kingdom that will never fall. And I want to be a part of it. And all I got to do is stay in him. What? He said, if you abide in my words, and my words abide in you, then, T-H-E-N, you can ask anything. And I want to be in that position. I want to be in that position. I say, well, not for me, but Lord, help this one. Lord, set somebody free. Lord, break an addiction tonight. In the name of Jesus, move by your spirit. Lift up the downtrodden. Lift up that hung down here. Put a song in somebody's heart tonight. A song of deliverance, Lord. Why? That your name might be glorified in the earth. That's what I want. I want him to turn my morning into dancing. <laughs> I, I, I was watching him. Hey, brother, your morning has been turned into dancing. And you can tell when somebody happy. Hey, <laughs> hey, glory to God. But that baby, and he's not a baby anymore. He finished his earthly duty. And he's just waiting on that appointed time to come back. And if you want to go with him, you got a choice to make. Right now, whose side are you standing on? Well, bless the Lord. Are you standing on the Lord's side? Are you standing on the losing side? There's only two sides. He's already won. When he got up, he said it's over. It's finished. All power. Not some power. All power, he said, under heaven, in the earth, and in heaven, is in his hand. And I believed him. And in my believing that, he set me free. Hey, I, I've been on this side for over 30 years now. I didn't know what I was missing. I, I couldn't think of a better thing that I would want to do than to be with God. Head, that I won't give somebody my test. Y'all need to know. I, I smoked so many cigarettes Amen. that I was lighting my next one with the one I just finished. And I did that all day long. All day long. I couldn't help it. I did everything I could to try to stop. And it didn't work. But one day at work, I, I, I want you to know how bad I was. I would ball up a pack of cigarettes at a traffic light and throw them out the window and get to the next traffic light and pull over and buy another pack. It, it was that bad. But I told God one day, I said, Lord, if you take this, I'll serve you the rest of my life. And it was a church night. We have service on Tuesdays. And, and it was a church night. I went to church. They had prayer. I went up. They prayed for me. I went on. I got up the next day. Went to work. I got almost to work and almost ran off the road. The desire was gone. Well, when I left the church, when I left the church, I had a full pack of cigarettes sitting in the car. And the enemy told me, don't throw them away. This, this is just for a moment. And I sat them on the mantle. And they sat there till they crumbled up. It never had another desire to smoke. And he began to strip me little by little. He, he said, some things that, as, as you travel... The blessing overtakes you. See, but you have to start out on a journey. You can't get to the end of the journey without starting out. So the further I went, then the more I saw how much God was doing in my life. How, how many, he's still breaking habits. He, he's still moving in me. You know where I used to get up in the middle of the night and search the ashtray 
looking for butts. Now I get up in the middle of the night and open up the book. Hey, I, I, I traded tobacco for the word. And I couldn't have made a better choice. He, he made all the difference of the world in my life. And I stand here to tell you that there's a king. And he's over everything. And all you have to do is ask him. Once you give your life to him, all you have to do is ask. He said, I'll do it. And that's what you got to remember. He'll do it. My testimony to you is ask him tonight. If you got a problem, give it to him. Right now, you don't have to keep it. Just give it to him. He wants to take it. He, he's been telling us that. Uh, he started early today in the church. He said, somebody's looking for a miracle. Yeah. It's here. All you got to do is take it. God is offering it. He, he wants your burden right now. He, he wants that sickness you got right now. He, he wants that fetter that you can't undo right now. Those chains. He want them right now. The gate is open. You're not bound anymore. But you got to give it to God. I'm through. Pray for me. Hallelujah. Let's just praise God for a few minutes here. Let's just praise him. Let's just praise him. Hallelujah. You just heard a Holy Ghost preacher. A man of God just got up and testified of what the Lord has done in his life. He wasn't blowing religious smoke. God got a hold of his life. And I'll tell you what, God's no respect to persons. And what God did for that young man there, God will do for you. But you got to answer the call. You got to you got to move when the dinner bells are ringing. And I'll tell you what, God's ringing the dinner bell tonight. Some of you are bound up. Some of you are tripping off. Some of you are freaked out. Some of you don't know which way to go because you're playing with the devil. I'll tell you what, the devil will take you out if you don't wake up and smell God's coffee tonight. Because God's coffee's brewing and you need to get it while it's hot. I don't know about you, I hate lukewarm coffee. I like hot coffee. I use the microwave and cook it up and I want it good and hot. I want it to smack my lips and go down my throat and have burn my throat. I want my coffee hot. And God wants some hot people tonight for him tonight. If you're dead, if you've got cold, dead religion, if your bones are just cold and frozen, if you've been in, a, in like a New York freezer in the middle of the winter, I want you to wake up tonight and let God touch your life. Let the Holy Ghost and the power of God move in your life and take you to a new level. But you got to say, I do, I will, and Lord, I want you more than anything else. This ain't no time to play games. He talked about that little baby that came as a conquering king. People been looking for men all the time to rise up and They've all fallen. Nations have fallen. People have fallen. Every kingdom of this world has fallen. But Jesus Christ is establishing his kingdom. Jesus prayed when he was on the earth, Oh, Father, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I'll tell you what, the kingdom of God right now is in our midst. And God's kingdom wants to show himself strong in your life. But you got to say yes. You've got to answer the call. This thing's been paid for. The blood of Jesus has been paid. And I'll tell you what, the price has been paid. But you got to say yes. And you got to give God all your heart. He don't want no half-stepping. He don't want no half-heart. He wants all of you. I'll tell you what, when Uncle Sam, like he said, calls you, he gets all of you whether you like it or not. When you sign on the dotted line, they make you into what they want you to be. And you become a part of a military machine. You ain't the same person no more. And you follow the mission that was given you by your higher ups and I'll tell you what we serve a greater kingdom and a greater God than the military and God's military ain't no joke and God wants all of you God wants every one of us to come to a place we say Lord I will Lord I do Lord I want you who's going to answer the call of God tonight who's going to get real with us say 
I'll tell you what God ain't all about the frozen chosen. The devil's lied. He's, he's conned the church. He's called the church to just become a religious, traditional organization that's famous for nothing. We ought to be winning souls, fire-breathing Christians, seeing deliverance in people's lives, healing in people's lives, helping people's lives. We need to go and restore people's lives. We need to see people healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. We need to get people off that alcohol. God ain't got no sipping saints. He wants you to sip at the power of the presence of God that comes from the throne of God. Out of his throne comes a well of life. It's called a river of living water. And I'll tell you what, God wants to give you something to drink tonight that'll change your life. But if you don't say yes, Lord, I want you more than anything else, Lord. God, I need you. I know it's Christmas, but I don't want to just go to another Christmas season buying presents, doing things, being with people I don't want to be. I want to get to know you, Lord. I'm going to find you in Jesus' name. I'll tell you what, this is your chance. But you got to say yes. And listen close, it has to be from the heart. The heart is the area you where the walk to is. And you got to say, Lord, I do want you. Lord, I need you. And if that's you tonight, you're in good shape because the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God is calling you to come close to him. I talked to India today over live stream. I jumped out of bed and I got a call. They had a big party going on way in India. I've never met this crew. And they had a whole church group there and said, Pastor Steve, you're going to preach. I go, what? I go, give me 25 minutes to take a shower. And I got out of the shower. I'll tell you what, these people were ready. They were ready for the word of God. And I'll tell you what, they responded over in India. 10,000 miles away. They were listening to the word of God. And that's what we need to do. We need to utilize these airways. We need to take over this planet in the name of Jesus. We got to quit giving excuses on why we can't and say, Lord, here I am. Use me in Jesus' name. God's given you a mouth. He's given you wisdom. He's given many of you knowledge and you need to use it. Don't just park on stupid when you get a hold of God. Let God use you. Let God make you into a soul and a champion in Jesus' name. You got a call in your life, young man. And I'll tell you what, God's going to show you in the days ahead. He wasn't playing when he brought you to this church. He wasn't playing when he let you be raised up here because the fire of God's going to move in you and through you and through you like you never could believe it. I'll tell you what, your best days are coming. So you just keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep looking to God. You keep saying, Lord, have your way. I mean, I understand, but I believe you got your hand to me. Thank you for being good to me. Give God a hand. Amen. God ain't playing. God ain't playing. Sum me up here right now. Listen close. This is Christmas. You got to be determined right now. I'm not going to go through this Christmas season like I've done all my life. Just having a turkey dinner, a honey baked ham, and hanging with family I don't want to be with because a lot of them are unsaved going through the same old religious tradition. Lord, I want something different. And I'll tell you what, if you know for real your name's been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if that's got a hold of you, I know deep in your heart you want to express that faith to somebody else. And somebody needs to be unlocked tonight. You need to be unlocked from the power of self, from the power of pride, from the power of religious tradition, so that you can come alive in Christ, so that when you go out that door tonight, you are blazing light. You're a torch in the hand of Almighty God. And you're going to light up people's lives just like be by being. You ain't got to push to make it happen. Just be. Hang out with God. Let him be. The light's in you. You ain't got to work it up because he's in you. You just got to say, Lord, have your way. Walk down that street. People feel it. I'll tell you one thing about the Spirit of God. You can feel the Spirit of God. You get around people who know God, you just want to come closer, like moths to the light, like bees to honey. Like salt and pepper, peanut butter and jelly, you know. Ed Sion and peacemakers, we're the peanut butter and jelly church. Amen. Amen. God blesses peanut butter and jelly. Amen. When the black and the white, the rich and the poor, those north eight mile, south eight mile in Detroit City come together and say, I'm going to worship God, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to give them a big holy hug. And I'm going to let them know from my heart, not just religiously, I love you, brother. You're special to me. Pastor James, you are awesome. The heritage of this man in this church is rich. And the very seeds that have been sown throughout the years and are presently germinating and starting to bloom are going to produce a holy crop of righteousness, peace, and joy. 
in this city from peacemakers down to your church down on Mac. The glory of God is going to just settle in and continue to move as we continue to come together and worship God in spirit and in truth. The blessing of God is just going to saturate this area. And it's going to move through Zion, move through peacemakers, and move through the people of God to join themselves to the kingdom. And people are going to see it and they're going to feel and they're going to experience the life of God. Because this ain't about being religious. This is about knowing God. The king was born. The king was raised, the king preached, and the king died. And like was said by the preacher, when he rose, he said, all power is given unto me. And guess who's got the power in his name now? Williams. Ewans, Williams, Usons. Williams got it in Jesus' name. And we need to proclaim his name and let God be glorified tonight. I want that worship team come back up here. Come on. I mean, while they're coming up, I want people to want prayer. Come on. You pray softly. Play softly in the back. Antonio, come up here. Come up here. You've been changed by the power of God. Where's that, where's that guy over here? I'm not going to have you share that, but I want you up here. I haven't seen you in years. This man was a devil worshiper. This man walked up on our grounds about 15 years ago. He still looks mean and ugly, doesn't he? I love you, too. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> This guy had, anybody ever heard of the, the group called KISS? Yes. Yeah. And it's really Kings and Satan service? Yeah. He came up during an outreach totally filled with his KISS ma makeup, wow. shirts. He came in as a, and he's a big old boy. And he came in, he walked right up Shane here, and he came to an outreach with his KISS clothes on. And he came in just snarling, filled with demons. <laughs> And he'd come to the outreach thinking he was going to kill, steal, and destroy, mess up God's sheep. But I'll tell you what, the Holy Ghost got him by the throat. He threw him on the ground in Jesus' name. And we cast the devils out of him. And by that night, we had a fire. And he was throwing all his kiss clothes in there and making a covenant with God. And to this day, he served Almighty God. Give God a hand. Amen. Amen. That's the evidence. That's the evidence. So he looked like the devil. He was the devil. He came into God's territory. But God said it ain't happening. God's after these demon-possessed people, people that are lost and without hope. You know why they do that? They're searching for love, searching for attention, searching for acceptance. And when they feel the love, the love of Jesus through his people, they say yes. It's the love of God through God's people that changes lives. we got to get real about this thing, folks. It's the last inning of the game. God's saying it's time. It's time. This year is going to be a glorious year. 2017, I'm telling you, we're not just going along religious traditions. Oh, it's another year. This year, trust me, this year things are going to get unlocked that have been stored for years. The flower is blooming. The plant has been planted. And God is moving through his people, wherever they are, that are committed to him, that ain't been playing. And the Holy Ghost is bringing forth the fruit. And all his beautiful uh, flower petals and fruit and everything, it's going to be blooming and coming off the tree this year. And you know what? Listen, folks. Fruit on a tree. Like, I'm a, right, a tree of righteousness, like many of you that plant in the Lord. And the fruit of the Spirit, any fruit that comes out of me, the love, joy, peace, long set, it's not for me. Fruit's on a tree. I'm hanging out with a fruit. Right. Fruit's for people to come pick off Amen. the tree. Right. When they see the love, that Bartlett pear, that uh, New Haven peach, them beautiful cherries, you're supposed to just stand there, and they smell it, they feel it, and they come up and they go, that's good, what's that? And you look at me and you say, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. So the fruit that God's been developing in your lives is for others. And as you yield yourself to God and get out of your box, whatever box you're in, it's contained the power of God in your life and the life of God. And you just get out and say, Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, have mercy. Use me to reach others. Because listen, there's an appointed time, folks. Now we're just, God's going to move. But where this whole show is going to be over, we're going to all be standing for God like in a minute. Trust me. And then it is what it is. No more opportunity to reach out. This is it. People like him, demon possessed all over. People unlike him look totally nice. People may be highly educated, rich people, poor people. Some people look extremely normal, but here's the, here's the thing. They're not saved. They don't know Jesus. 
We know something that a whole lot of folks don't know. That this thing's real. And if you know it's real, do something about it. Let God use you to be a blessing to somebody else. Let's just pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, not by might nor by power. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we break every stronghold, every power of the enemy, every demonic influence in the name of Jesus. The power of Satan to be broken right now in this room, in this community, and wherever this goes, in the name of Jesus Christ, the power of Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, to be exalted right now and break every influence of the evil one. Father, cause the powers of hell to be shattered and come down now in Jesus' name. Cause your holy presence, Lord, to move within your people's lives as never before. And let there be a provoking and let there be a stirring in all your people everywhere that's saying right now, I'm not going to live like being cold, dead, and frozen anymore. I want God to use me and have his way with me. So, Lord, show me how to do this. And you start just by yielding, surrendering, and then just learning to be whatever he's called you to be. This isn't about being a clone. This is about being you before God. Let God use the uniqueness of your personality and who you are in Christ. And you be that vessel and go out and just reach out and touch another life. People are dying and going to hell everywhere, man. Everywhere. And if you know this stuff, we have a responsibility before God to tell people. And I'll tell you what, they don't just walk into church. you got to drag them in. You got to drag them in, and you got to go out. Some are still never coming. You got to go out to the highways and the hedges, like Jesus said, and compel them to come in. That His house may be filled. It's time to be the church, to mobilize, and to be everything God's called us to be. God's raising up something that we would call maybe a military machine, but it's going to be by those who humbly seek Him and want God more than their own life. Humility is going to be the key. And the grace and mercy of God is going to be the agent. And the love of God is going to be the divine glue that's going to keep us together and roll as one to make a difference on this planet. So let's yield to the living God. Let's let God have his way. Let's let the mercy of God truly flow through us and become what God wants us to be. Let's quit having these stupid religious, religious debates that profit nothing. Amen. So many people spend their time arguing and never yield to God to use them to get somebody saved. I'll tell you what, there's so much error on the planet in churches. People want God, they say, and they want the word, but all they do is get fat on the word. And they go out and nobody knows. And you know what? I see the devil clapping. You better use what God puts in you. It was given to you so God could move through you. At the appointed time, it will come forth. If you're real, if you're genuine, if you're a diamond and not a zirconium, the fruit will come forth at the appointed time. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be anxious about it. You don't have to scream and shout about it. All you have to do is humbly submit to God. And when you're real with God, God will see and hear and answer your prayers. It's time, church, to rise. And we will be one, mark my words. We will be one. Peacemakers in Zion is, I believe, a pattern, a blueprint in God's hand. One of many, I'm sure, on the planet, but this one in the hood, in Shane, in the darkest part of the city, some would say. And God is using this as a template to be a pattern, to show his glory. And show if we'll come together in the name of Jesus, not because of politics. In fact, politics have never come up in this meeting. People ain't even thinking about it. Give God a hand. Hey, how do they do that out there? It's all about Jesus. 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 Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. I'll tell you what, God's way beyond the political machine. He's beyond governments. And I'll tell you what, it's time to praise him. Hallelujah. Where's the praise him? Get up here. Come on. We're going to go out praising God. We're going to go out praising God. Brother James, Pastor James, go ahead while we're getting ready. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus is His name. Holy, holy, holy. 
sing another song that Jesus is real to me. Praise God. But just before we do that, part of worshiping God too is giving. Hello. Praise the Lord. We want to take up an offering and leave an offering. Amen. So we're going to ask from the bring the basket all around. Praise God. Real to me, is it real today? Oh, 
Stuff we want to do for the children's. Right. Say the children's. children's. All right. And Miss Elaine, why don't you why don't you help Miss?